So, you got your Steam order in on time for your Steam Deck. A lot of people are really excited about the Steam Deck that's coming. I've got my order in on uh, Jan or July 17th, 2021. Mine's not coming until Q2. I might have got the nicer one. I couldn't decide. I was waffling and then found out later. It was like, oh, if you get the cheap one, it's going to ship immediately. But if you get the nice one, it comes later. So, oops. But all is not lost. You can still experience and or develop on a Steam Deck-ish analog. This is the UM700 from Minis Forum. Let's take a look. First off, I love this. Minis Forum. Just a bunch of enthusiasts got together and said, yes. Let's do small form factor computers. Because there is a pretty good market for that kind of thing. I mean, something even beyond the Intel NUC, but that's a little bit more DIY and has some more home lab type features. I mean, some of these minis are specifically including multiple NICs so that you can run, you know, your home VM host because, you know, four, eight cores, that's really all you need. This is the UM700. This is a Ryzen 7 3750H, four cores, eight threads. Base clock 2.3 gigahertz, turbo up to 4 gigahertz. This one has 16 gigabytes of RAM in a dual channel configuration. It also has a 512 gig SSD. Physically, there's enough room for a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive as well. It's got M2230 Wi Fi dual band. It's got one HDMI 4K 60 out, two DisplayPort outs, and one USB C out. And yes, the USB C can actually do display. We'll test all of that, don't worry. Here I'm using a Moshi USB-C to DisplayPort cable with our LG monitor. Now this is an ultra-wide 3840 by 1600. That works fine. This is also one of the few monitors I've got that has a built-in USB-C input and that works fine too. I was also really surprised to find in the BIOS they do actually give you control over the uh, TDP. So this is a 35 watt part. It's what AMD lists it as. You can of course use as little as 15 watts or as much as 35 watts but you can even juice it. You can give it another 10 watts. 45 watts seem to be about what the uh, cooler in this thing was limited to. And I don't know that I would really recommend going from 35 to 45 watts for daily use because does that power go to the CPU, the GPU? But hey, the option is in the BIOS. It's a very well organized BIOS as well. You got access to all the AMD options and you should be able to do pretty much anything that you could possibly want to do from this BIOS. Nothing's locked down or locked away. This comes to level one courtesy of Minis Forum from Hong Kong. And it's included a DC power brick and the whole nine yards. Let's dive in and take a look. This is one I'll probably send to Eric Raymond to use for his home server stuff because uh, he's got an old J1900 Celeron. Ooh, it's a little long in the tooth. Minis Forum, new gen desk mini computer. Beep boop 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 boop. You really got the unboxing experience down. It's nice. Don't lose that, that's your SATA adapter so that you can use your SATA plug. In fact, I'd say go ahead and put that on the inside. You got a Visa mount bracket, so you can mount it to the wall. Then we got our power brick. Included is an HDMI and display port. And a power cable, Let's go with the power brick. All right, anytime something includes cables in the box, I have to test with our total phase cable tester. <laughs> it's a $15,000 cable tester because well, I do a lot of tech support for the level one KVM and uh, 98 out of 100 times, it's the cables. So the cables that we're working with here are really short. First up, display port. That's a pass, surprising. So it can do 4K 120 Hertz. That's full display port 1.4. Now this APU is only display port 1.2. So that's a little surprising. All right, what about the HDMI cable? Again, the total phase cable tester saves the day. We run the eye diagram, hmm, there's a little noise on the eye diagram here for the HDMI, but nonetheless, it passes for HDMI 2.0, 4K 60 Hertz. So not bad, it's a pretty decent cable bundle. Oh, that's, that's swanky. It's latched. Now we can, <laughs> and we see our dual channel eight gigabyte DDR4 memory. Both our M.2 and our VRMs are both packing cute, tiny little heat sinks. This is not a fully passively cooled system. It has a fan that brings air in on the bottom and sort of circulates it around the top of the case. So you do get a little bit of airflow in here. The two and a half inch drive bay is hidden in the top right there. Now remember the SATA connector is extraordinarily proprietary. Just go ahead and take it from the box, put it in here and the next owner or the person who eventually uses this with a two and a half inch drive will thank you later. The USB on the front here is pretty killer. The USB type C up to 10 gigabit, yellow, also 10 gigabit, blue, five gigabit, not bad. 
At the rear, we've got two more USB ports, HDMI, display port, and a two and a half gigabit LAN. They didn't skimp at all. Of course, the processor, as I mentioned before, is the four core eight thread Ryzen 7 3750H. That is a pro APU. Theoretically, I think that means you could use error correcting memory, but I didn't have any error correcting memory to do testing. So if that's something you wanna see, if it's like, I'm dying to buy one of those to use for a home server, if only it had error correcting memory, let me know and maybe I'll, uh, I'll try to do some stuff. I actually was looking at some of the other models that Minis Forum has, and I'm thinking about buying uh, one of the models that would actually uh, handle a couple of drives so that you could use it for a home server for uh, RAID 1 and because I think that would be kind of a cool thing to do to set up especially in the in the in the vein of our Internet of Things video series and our home ultimate home server series because something like this sipping just a few watts is really cool now UM700, I started off talking about Steam. Why did I start off talking about Steam? Valve actually recommends this model, the 3750H with dual channel DDR4 for getting an analog for how the Steam Deck will behave. Now it's different in some really important ways. The GPU is a bit weaker. The CPU is on par, maybe a little better, maybe a little worse, depending on Valve early on said the CPU is a little better. Now Valve is saying, well, we are able to kind of juice things up a little bit. This also ships with Manjaro. So my configuration is 512 gig SSD, Manjaro and Steam, and it's pretty much already ready to go for the dev environment. Valve actually on their webpage has kind of a step-by-step -step sort of, you know, developer introduction. So if you're working on a game or you want to test the game to see what it's going to be like, you can do pretty much everything with this customized version, slightly customized version of Manjaro and Steam and everything else. There are some important differences noted on Valve's website, but you can just plug in a USB controller. You can plug in a 1280 by 720 display. And if it runs pretty well on this thing, it's gonna run pretty well on the Steam Deck. All right, so here I'm playing Monster Train. Why? Because, I don't know, just, just cause. Playing Monster Train on the Hacken Deck, yeah. It's very playable, very, very playable, shockingly playable. Let's try a title that's a little bit more stressful, Stellaris. Stellaris is like a 4X strategy game. It's a lot of fun and I'm happy to report 1280 by 800, it runs shockingly well on this system. So since I had an external monitor hooked up, I couldn't help myself. Is this thing still playable at higher resolutions? Well, I can play Stellaris up to 2560 by 1440. And it was reasonable, although it was starting to chug a little bit as you get a lot of ships and other stuff on the screen. Not bad though, very playable at 1080p at pretty high frame rates, all things considered. Now, if you do have a more powerful system in your house, you can also do in-home Steam streaming. So you can play a game on a much more powerful machine and stream it to this thing. And because, you know, you can plug in a more powerful display, that actually works fine. You know, playing at 1920 by 1080, doing the, the real-time streaming, was no problem for this thing. Valve is doing a phenomenal amount of work right now to basically make sure that their catalog is gonna work okay on the, on the Steam Deck, and it really shows. And you can take advantage of that by playing those games on the Hacken Deck, even ahead of the February 25th Steam Deck launch. So if you just can't wait for the Steam Deck, you could get this, although this isn't battery operated. It's not really exactly portable. Uh, it doesn't have its own built-in screen. I mean, it's not, it's not why it exists. But if you do game development and you wanna work on stuff, or you just wanna see how it performs, or you know that uh, yours is not gonna come until after Q2 2022, well, this will tide you over. You can sort of get a preview see how salient that's going to be when it does actually launch. And you know, hey, if you get bored of that, it'll make a perfectly reasonable home server that doesn't use a lot of uh, a lot of power, doesn't have ECC, doesn't have redundant drives, but has a lot of USB connectivity and it has a 2.5 gig LAN, which is nice. Also really like that I can run dual monitors at reasonable resolutions out of this thing. If you wanna run two 4K monitors and use this for productivity, you totally can. Minis Forum also has much more powerful machines based on newer Ryzen processors and other really exciting stuff. Of course, they cost a little more. This one's a little less expensive. Those are a little more expensive, but still for small form factor, the amount of horsepower that's here and everything else, even if you don't want to do, you know, Steam type dev, this makes a really amazing Linux machine that ships with Manjaro right out of the box. Again, thanks for Minis Forum for sending this over so that I could take a look at it. It's actually more exciting than I figured that it would be, being a Ryzen 7 3750H. It's an amazingly competent little machine. Very, very impressive. I'm Wilda, this is Level 1. If you think of anything fun that I can do or you want to test out a workload, let me know on the Level 1 Forum. I'm signing out, you can find me there.